Hey everybody, MTG Magpie here and welcome back to another video. Long time no speak, guys. Um, so today we've got the beautiful, beautiful green polish on and that means we're opening this. Oh yes, look at these beautiful packs. And I've got to say the nail polishes. I'm pretty happy with how close I could get on this one, particularly on the reflex. Look at that. Incredible. So I have here, uh, how many packs do I actually have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight packs of Theros Beyond Death at a cost of around £22. And I also have one Colette's Card Booster at a cost of £22. So this is my current conundrum in terms of magic. The Gathering and why I'm a little bit down on products lately. As a foil collector, this should be my jam, but the price is just insane so you know in terms of what i could afford working where i work you know these are the more realistic more boring and less exciting option in terms of product opening on youtube so i got a little bit down on it i've been doing some thinking i've decided stuff it all this channel has always been janky ass like i'm recording on uh, like a, a tripod balancing precariously on top of a, a, a little tiny unit thing so the grand aspirations matter not. Let's just open some packs, enjoy the shiny nail polish, enjoy the shiny cards and hang out together. And I think that's pretty much my goal for my YouTube channel these days. I'm just going to take it more chill. I'm going to make the content I like making, which will not necessarily be popular or anything. But, you know, if you if you want to hang out, you know cool cool let's get into it so i think i'm going to open a couple of the normal packs before diving into this one i know uh not very much about this set because i very early on decided i couldn't actually afford to buy much of it hence the lack of booster blockage because um it's after christmas I've, I've owned my house nearly a year and all the bills are sort of rearing my head again so oops being an adult sucks but hey ho let's take a look we'll have a look at some of the uh commons and uncommons just for my own benefit here Ooh, oh my god okay i'm i'm really liking the art and can we do the imagine this in foil thing or oh, am i not allowed is that a uh, not allowed these days i don't know oh god i hate this card the art freaks me right out i'm sorry if you're a fan of that uh, Staggering Insight is our first in common. Mystic Repeal. Thundering Chariot. And our first rare here is a Grave Baker. Grave Baker. Grave Breaker Lamia. That's pretty rad. Look at that snake. Excellent. Okay. We've got these weird and wonderful full art. I don't know what you would call these constellation lands. Like, I kind of love them kind of hate them i'm getting some real pokemon vibes from them Ooh, and we have a foil here this is alirus alirus english not not good alirus enraptured which is a very apt foil uh, to be getting on this channel we have that beautiful foily reflection there that's pretty nice this was definitely one i was thinking of picking up in foil so i'm really freaking happy to see that and uh, yeah this just describes my relationship with foils why would i ever want to look away oh beautiful all right and uh, ooh, we're back to trash cards just straight up ad cards i have a mug of these somewhere i'm not sure where it is one day i will put it on show it is literally stuffed full of these just like that like that many because I, I just keep hold of them just because i like to know how much uh useless crap i've been given uh from pack openings over the time weird i know weird i know but uh, we do love we do love the useless crap altar of the pantheon grim physician indomitable will moss viper yes my snake deck will be happy with that nixborn brute nylia's forerunner i'm kind of excited for this card I know it's only a common, but uh, I have a couple of commander decks that could benefit from some trampley goodness on the cheap. Not in terms of mana cost, but in terms of it's a cheap card and I can get copies of it. Uh, Nixborn Corsa, Nixborn Marauder. Oh, God. 
ichthymorphosis. I know ichthyology is the study of uh, fish, so uh, <laughs> I'll try. I'm really bad at pronouncing things. I'm so sorry. Phrenology singer. Renata called the hunt. I am a big fan of these um, uncommon legendaries. I kind of like them. They're pretty neat. Uh, impending doom. And artist's oracle of half truths. Uh, not a lot of value here, but it is a sweet ass uh, commander. Potentially. <laughs> could be fun. Could be fun for sure. I mean, I could see some fun with that. Uh, we've got the mountain. Ooh, we've got a foil bird, guys! Yes, this video could not be more perfect for this channel. It's the bloody foil bird that I wanted so badly. Oh, he's beautiful. Look at him. Oh, I love myself a scry bird. I have a uh, potentially to Shah commander deck that would enjoy that. I mean, I'd enjoy playing it even if it's not that good. Oh, and we have a uh, the full art tokens. I do love these, the feel of these tokens. They just look good. I enjoy them. I enjoy them, guys. I enjoy them. Uh, so, so far, uh, not a lot of value here, but a massive, massive flavour win, so I can't be too mad. Like, if I wanted some branding for the channel, this is, this is perfect. This is perfect. I really love this card. Imagine this in foil. It's going to look like it's Oracle's Insight from uh, the last one with the eyes and the star. Oh, so good. So good. Oh, there's a bird boy. Not in foil. Omen of the Hunt. Irrelevant Revelers. Relentless Pursuit. Dreadful Apathy. Moses' Favor. Bronze Sword. Riptide Turtle. All oh, right, Heroes of the Revel, Minions Return, One with Stars, and Storm Herald. It's a, it's a stormy card. I'm not very good with the whole uh, exiling it next end step sort of mechanic, but uh, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat for sure, and we're getting a swamp with that. Oh, and this cute little wolf token that I'm putting straight in my wolf decks. Oh, what a beautiful little wolf. He's so cute. I'm taking that as a win. He can come down here front and centre, I think. He's that cute. Oh, there's a greyhound being walked outside and it's adorable. I'm getting distracted. Getting distracted. All right. Uh, Pious Wayfarer, Discord of the Piper, Idol and Philosophy, Thrill of Possibility, Underworld Rage Hound, Nylia's Huntmaster, Hero of the Pride, Underworld Charger, Brine Giant, Scophus War Leader. We have the Dawn Evangel. Agonizing Remorse. Hero of the Winds, yes, yes, excellent Griffin. And Cloythus, God of Destiny, first mythic. Ooh, I don't know how to feel about this one. I mean, that's pretty, pretty exciting. It wasn't something I was massively interested in building, but maybe I am now I have a copy of Cloythus. Ugh, I don't know. It's it's pretty it's it's interesting guys. I'm not sure what to make of it. A little bit of value. Uh not massive, but always happy to get a mythic on one of these random pulls when we're not opening boxes. Uh so that's quite exciting. Um a conundrum for sure what I'm gonna do with this card. But uh pretty nice. Let's put you front and centre now. Uh we have a mountain and another <laughs> <laughs> Why don't these have redemption codes on them? I've just been spoiled by my very brief dabblance with Pokemon. I used to enjoy giving those codes away on the channel uh, because I didn't play the uh, online Pokemon game, but other people did, and it was great. Can't do that anymore. Uh, Plummet, Sunmain Pegasus, Wrath in Flames, Deny the Divine, Assassin Skirmisher, Captivating Unicorn. I really want one of those in foil for sure. Uh, funeral Rites, Starlet Mantle, Irrelevant Revelers, a Voracious Typhon. Ooh, Calafe, Beloved by the Sea. This is the, what is it, the, the Constellation Frame. I don't think there's many of them in these frames, but uh, 
They look rad. I imagine they're going to look nice in foil. I mean, we'll find out in a bit in the collector's pack. Uh, that's pretty neat, though. I've never actually seen one before. I think that's pretty cool. So that's nice. We're getting a nice showcase of foils, mythics, tokens, uh, alternate frames. Pretty happy with that, actually. I'll put you there. Uh, Underworld Fires. Stinging Lionfish. And our rare here is Dream Trawler. Uh, doing some work for sure. Uh, it's a pretty good pickup. Any card with that much text and no flavour text is a good pickup. Um, so yeah, I don't have a home for this, but uh, I do have a few Azorius decks, so maybe I can find somewhere for this to go. Uh, a Plains and a Sata token. Alright, I think we're going to clear up uh, these three and then go on to this. I'm sorry, I'm such a tease. I said we'd do it sort of halfway through, but it, it, you can't open one of those and then go back to these. It's just, it's just not as satisfying. I know why you all want to watch openings of these. I am the same, but damn, you know. Uh, Fruit of Tiserius, Return to Nature, Carmetra's Blessing, Rage Scar Berserker, Triumphant Surge, Soul Reaper of Mogus, Omen of the Sea. Ooh, Rid of Mountains Blaze. Loathsome Chimera. All right, we have Hydra's Growth. My uh, Maui deck was super excited about this card being printed. Uh, Blood Aspirant, Chainweb Arachnia, and Erebus's Intervention. I do like uh, the dual mode cards. Um, I can maybe find a home for this. I have a couple of decks that care about uh, life gain, not so many decks that care about um, exiling cards from graveyards. I could maybe make that work. It's a it's a thing I don't have, so maybe I need to think about that in the future. But a rad card for sure. A thwamp. We have a foil omen of the sea. We got them foily eyes. Foily eyes. I would love to do a video on just the top 10 cards with foil eyes. It would not do very well, but I'd be very entertained. Uh, a beautiful omen of the sea. That is nice. Uh, Scry effects always good. Hey, we've got our uh, thing to go with our dude. <laughs> nice. Maybe we can get a foil one out of there. That would be better. That would be much better. All right. Two packs to go. I am a real... Oh, dear. Dropping everything everywhere. A real excite. Real excite. Okay, Sleep of Dead, Wings of Hubris, Hero of the Games, Omen of the Hunt, Hero of the Pride, Scavenging Harpy, Elite Instructor, Omen of the Forge, Nexborn Colossus, Transcendent Envoy. I really want a foil of that as well. That would be awesome. Oh, our first uh, saga. Elspeth's Nightmare. Hmm. <laughs> Not sure I've got a home for this one, but seems cool. I could maybe get the discard effect going, but uh, I don't know. Uh, favoured of Aris. Ooh, here we go. Another saga. The birth of Miletus. Um, I, I'm actually, uh, you know, just getting some lands in white might be... <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying it might be okay. <laughs> oh... Or white. It might be okay. I can maybe make that work. Uh, Protean, Thalmaturge. Uh, Constellation. Copy of another target creature. Oh, I do love a good copy effect. I really do. I wonder if I can find a home for this in um, maybe my Zedru sort of chaos deck. That could be fun. That really could be fun. There's a couple of enchantments. There's a couple of nasty enchantments in there. Um, that maybe this could work with. I'll have to review if there's enough enchantments in there to make this work. But that would be incredible. Otherwise, uh, maybe something I could put in the, the Pramican deck. I never finished building. Maybe. That had, um, like, Wall of Stolen Identities and all that sort of stuff in it. So maybe? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I'm always happy to have uh, copiers, though. That's always fun. A forest and a human soldier token. All right, last of the draft pack, which in my head I've been calling, you know, scrub packs. But 
<laughs> this is purely because I don't draft with them, but you know, that I'm a I'm one of those terrible people who just opens them and does not draft. Uh, ooh, Ikoria promo. I mean, I'm kind of excited for Ikoria, not gonna lie. Uh, Flicker of Fate, Aspect of the Manticore, Lampard of Death's Vigil, Idol on a Philosophy, Omen of the Dead, Thirst for Meaning, Final Flare, Hyrax Tower Scout, Revoke Existence, Venomous Hierophant. All oh, right, Anax Hardened in the Forge, another one of these uh, constellation frames. Really nice, really do like these. I know they're worth um, absolute diddly because they're in uh, these bad boys. So, uh, but it's still a nice feeling when you open one, particularly uh, when you're new to opening the stuff. You, you feel pretty, pretty amped by it. Uh, Destiny Spinner. <laughs> Farragut Spawn. It's a Gorgon. That's exciting. Allure of the Unknown. Uh, beautiful artwork. That's about all I can say for this card. Really? I mean, I have yet to build a, a Rakdos deck, so maybe I'll make it work in that. Maybe. Uh, we have an island. And a spider token. All right, let's play for the big money, everyone. Let's play for the big money. Oh, um, I wanted to... There was, like, odds on here that were kind of interesting. Where were they? Oh, here we go. I thought this was interesting. So, includes 12 foil and 2 to 5 rare or mythic cards. So you have a 46% chance to get 3 rare or mythic cards. 37% chance to get 4 uh, rare or mythic cards. 5% chance to get 5 rare or mythic cards. Um, and the Planeswalker God Demigod Rare Mythic Cards may have alternate frames. The Foil Alternate Frame Mythic Card is in 16% of boosters. I mean, I find it interesting they have to specify the odds on the back of the packs. I'm not entirely sure what they say on these ones. What do they say on these ones? Nobody gives a shit about this but me. Uh, foils are 1, 2, 3. Uh, did we get 1, 2, 3? We did pretty much get 1, 2, 3, so odds are working there. Um, okay, so which one do you think we're going to be in? 46%, 37% or 5% of packs? I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm not... We did all right on the Eldraine ones, but uh, I don't know if I'm feeling lucky. Oh, also, where were these manufactured? Made in the USA. Now, the USA ones have that funny line on them, don't they? Do they still have that? They do still have that... Um, I am, there is no way I'm going to be able to get to show you that on camera, but right there. Oh, you can kind of see it there. Is that print line? Uh, I know people have been asking about that. Uh, currently, I, I think they're only produced in the US, so all packs are going to have that line on. Whether you are buying them in the EU or the Americas region. Uh, it's just going to have that line, and I recommend you check, because I've seen a couple of people be like, nah, no line. It's there, guys. Like, as the foil person, it there. It there. So, um, it, yeah, you know, I kind of wish they'd sort it. Like, it's pretty bad form on this premium product, but the way they probably think about it is it's only on your first common, and who gives a crap about the commons? Apart from me, who gets really upset by this, because this could have been a nice foil. Except it's a black foil. Uh, and you know I'm kind of funny about black foils. Although I do love how that, that fruit does look very tempting in foil. And I know, get on with it. You just want to see what's in here. Uh, Venomous Hierophant. That's a really popping foil, that is. That's a really nice foil. Also, I'm going to sleeve all of these ones immediately. I would maybe leave the these ones out. Because these ones... Are made in Belgium, which gives me a little bit more time to get them into sleeves before they start curling. But uh, my Throne of Eldraine one's pretty much curled immediately, so uh, get them into sleeves as soon as you open them. Uh, Daybreak Chimera, that's a... I want to say it's a lackluster foil, but I do love the ones that are just like blank foil in the background. It does look rad as hell. Uh. No, I'm not saying it again. The bloody fish 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 enchant excellent uh the lands which is interesting it's interesting that you can get the the uh non-full art lands in this slot i mean they're coming in the the bundles aren't they the bundles don't have the uh the 
real full art foils, which everyone's so hyped about. Uh, but they're still nice foils. Ooh, a moss viper foil. Excellent. My janky snake deck will be real happy to have this one. Um, it's a real, real odd deck. I'll have to go through it with you one day. Uh, but, yep. All right. We have the Threnergy Singer as our uncommon. That's pretty neat. Ooh, Annex Hardened in the Forge, the non-constellation, but foil. Always pleased to pick these up in foil, just in case I ever want to build them. Of course, we get our foil lands. I definitely overpaid for a couple of these. I mean, it was only three, but I definitely overpaid for a couple of these uh, when they were announced. Um, and I, I think the prices should go down, but I'm really happy to pick up a foil. Forest, I would be really excited to see. I haven't got a planes yet. Uh, so I'd be really excited to see a planes. Yes! Yes! So I think um, I ordered a forest. I've got a swamp. I think I've got an island. So I would just need to get my hands on a mountain. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. It's the perfect pack for me. It's Celestia. Amazing. Okay. Uh, art. And ancillary card is not what they call these. Uh, Victory's Envoy. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control. I could make that work. I could make that work in a deck. I think I could make that work. I'm not entirely sure which one, but I do have a couple of go wide uh, decks. So yeah, maybe. <laughs> Ooh, our full art is uh, Croakser, Titan of Death's Hunger. I mean, that's super exciting, really. And the full art legendaries are things I'm definitely interested in. I'm not entirely sure this is my favourite art. <laughs> I'm a little bit spooked by it, but maybe that's a good thing. I think Raven may be interested in this, just because it's got rad as hell, dark, soulish artwork on it, but not bad. Okay, let's see what we're going to get behind here. Uh, a Kraken. Hmm. Feels kind of, feels kind of bad. Oh, oh dear. Hey, Raven will be interested in this for his Sea World deck, at least. Although it's a foil. Will the magpie let it go? Hmm. A conversation for another time, perhaps. The foil sea does look nice, though. Um... Then we have the first Eroan Games. This is non-foil. Uh, it's a saga I was kind of interested in. I'm not entirely sure. I, I feel like it may be good enough to put in my Mao deck. It may be good enough just for that second, uh, second verse. But... Uh... The card draw be nice as well, I guess. I'm having a debate on camera. I'm sorry. You just want to see what's in the pack. I'll move on. Uh, we have Daxos, Blessed by the Sun. This is one of those foil constellation boys. Uh, this is my first time seeing them in foil. I'm enjoying how the stars are definitely uh, shiny. That's nice. The other thing I'm really enjoying, which I've not actually been able to see yet, is all the little dots on the border. I remember saying if they've got standout foiling on them, I'd be pretty impressed and interested in collecting a set of these. And as you can see, they are reflecting differently to the uh, foil that surrounds them. So they have got some detailing on them. So this is a super rad card. Unfortunately for me, it means I'm now invested in getting a set and the mythic ones are hella expensive, hella expensive. But I could maybe satisfy myself just getting the uh, uncommon set and calling it a day. That is pretty nice. Ah, the foils are just so good, guys. The foils are so good. And our token is, of course, the human soldier. That's actually looking on the cheaper side for foiling. I mean, I guess it's because it's a token, but the foiling on that looks particularly cheap. Just, um... I can't really get any detail to show on that. That is just like, uh, in fact it is. It's just a flat foil. Kind of disappointing. I'm not sure if the uh, other tokens were just flat foils or if they did have detail on them. Uh, I might check that. Uh, but there you go, guys. Theros. 
I hope you enjoyed this opening. It's been a little bit random, been a little bit ranty. Uh, that's kind of the headspace I'm in at the moment. It's really difficult to uh, get out of that headspace. I'm trying to enjoy what's on offer, but it's just so painful when you're a foil collector and there's this pre premium uh, foil product that just feels um, particularly unobtainable and is kind of ruining my enjoyment of like, you know, just getting foils out of normal packs because you could just think, oh, I'll just get the expensive one and get a whole, you know, sort of set of them. It's pretty, it's pretty painful days. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know how to move forward from this. Uh, if you guys have had any similar feelings, it'd be great to, uh, you know, hear them and sort of work out a way forward, but I still open a lot of booster packs in my spare time. I just haven't been recording them because the, the motivation and the desire is just not there. Um, but I think it's coming back. I think even if I just want to sit on a camera, open them and rant, I think that's enough for now. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me. We got some pretty sweet pulls, but I feel like the collector's pack was a definite sort of wah wah. But these, these were pretty flavorful. Big thumbs up from me. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye!